Oh, hi guys, how are you doing? So yesterday I made a video called What is Woke? And the problem is it was very long and it was a bit convoluted and a bit too complicated. So I thought I would make a slightly simpler one, but kind of gets to the point a little bit more. Okay, so what actually is woke? What is wokeness? What's, what's something that you always carry with you? Hot Just sauce. Really? You, yeah. Yeah. Really? Are you getting information right now? <laughs> Hot sauce. Hot sauce wow. in my bag, Swag? Hot sauce. Really? Yes. Now, listen, yes. I just want you to know people are going to see this and say, okay, she's pandering to black people. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is it working? Okay. So, like the previous video, I'm going to start at the beginning. Karl Marx and Engels basically had a world view that the world was really divided into two different groups. In fact, there are more than two groups, but within a country, there will be the workers, the proletariat, and there will be the elite, the rich, the bourgeoisie, the rulers who basically own the means of production. Now, Marx had a very simplistic view of economics because he lived in an age where there were factories and there were farms and there wasn't that much advanced business at the time. Obviously, computers and modern technology was way off. So his idea was when you produce something, you have to have a worker who physically produces stuff. So that's kind of what the theory is based on. And it's basically a theory of class struggle. So the bourgeoisie are the elites and they need to be overthrown by the proletariat because the bourgeoisie will basically grind the workers into the ground and they'll make them as poor as possible to extract the most labor from them and okay you've got the two warring groups what intersectionality did which is the fancy word for woke is they said, hey, why don't we take the same concept, the two warring groups, and apply it to lots and lots of different ideas, which are all intersecting means and ways of being powerful and privileged. And they decided that there should be certain characteristics that people have that basically define who they are, and everyone will be somewhere on a big wheel of power and privilege and if you are born privileged then you're basically the bourgeoisie who must be destroyed if you are marginalized then you are the oppressed class and you have to basically rise up with your fellow oppressed people to overthrow the system and install some kind of um utopia uh, i don't know some kind of um, brand new way of doing stuff they don't really focus more on the end goal it's more about um, trying to change society so that supposedly marginalized people can become more powerful so it attracts a lot of really Machiavellian people who want to gain power and they see this as a mechanism for self-advancement and I'm gonna go over the categories because I think it's important skin color so they believe white is good, dark is bad. Again, I think this really depends on what part of the world you're in. And it isn't universal. You see, the whole problem with uh, making a rule for everyone is it doesn't apply to everyone. So in certain circumstances, actually having um, darker skin might be a big advantage, for example. Um, it, it really depends on who you're with. And I don't think it is like a fixed thing within society. So formal education, generally it's better to have a formal education. People who are more educated tend to have fewer kids, especially women. So you could argue from an evolutionary point of view, actually having higher education and having fewer kids means you're going to pass on less of your genes. So you can make an argument for the other side. It's covering ability. So are you able bodied or do you have disabilities? Sexuality, neurodiversity, um, mental health, um, body size. Here on the intersectional wheel, we have English, learned English and uh, non-English bilingual. Again, the problem here is many people who have learned English also know a second language. In fact, nearly every single one of them. And knowing a second language or a third language is a massive advantage, especially in the workplace. So, for example, I went for a job interview and 
the woman who was interviewing me was very rude. She said I was very stupid because I only really knew one language fluently. I know a little bit of French, a little bit of Spanish, um, tiny, tiny bit of Japanese, a few other languages, a few words. But yeah, I basically am only fluent in one language. So she was incredibly rude to me. I would actually say being bilingual is a massive advantage. Uh, cisgender man, cisgender woman, trans, intersex, and non-binary. So... They're basically saying that being a cisgender man gives you more power and privilege. Complete nonsense. Maybe in certain circumstances there might be advantages here, but we only have to look at a few statistics. Most of the homeless people, the people in prison, the people who suffer horrendous violence on the streets. Um, most of the um, early deaths happen to men, for example. Uh, there's good things about being a man and there's good things about being a woman but i wouldn't say that being a man is actually an advantage especially in academia because right now women are absolutely kicking men's butts the statistics said that women were a third more likely to go to university than men so that's pretty massive right there citizenship undocumented and um documented okay maybe being a citizen of a country is an advantage depends on um obviously this is america centric but it does depend on what country you are a citizen of my basic point about this wheel of power and privilege is uh, inaccurate because the amount of privilege and power you have really depends on the company you keep and to say that white people are privileged and um dark people, which that's their terminology, are underprivileged, is complete nonsense. I think social class is far more important than skin tone. I hate to use Barack Obama as an example. What's the problem with wokeness and why do, I would say conservatives, but a lot of parents don't like this. Well, a lot of people in America, for example, believe that Americans come in all shapes and colours, all creeds, all religions. Anyone can be American and they should all be equal, right? That's quite an old idea and I think that's a really good idea actually. That everybody should, as far as possible, be equal and they should all be Americans, right? I mean, if you see your primary identity as not being American but being something else, for example, I think that's bit of a problem because you're not going to see the whole country as your community you're basically or your state or your town you're going to see random people who have the same kind of characteristics as you as being your community and i don't think that's particularly healthy for social cohesion of course if we come back to the original idea that this is all based on the people who were powerful so-called were the people the bourgeoisie they were the people who had to be destroyed and in the previous video i showed loads of examples of white people who were basically being hated and vilified and oppressed because of their arbitrary characteristics and i think that is wrong it is racist to be uh discriminatory based on race it doesn't matter what your race or ethnicity is if you were discriminating based on race that is racism i don't care about the new um definition the new definition is privilege plus power so for example they would say there are more white americans in the government than other groups and therefore the white people have power sorry that might be how it works in intersectional world but that's not how it works in reality in fact um, what someone looks like is completely and utterly, I wouldn't say irrelevant, but it shouldn't but limit you and it shouldn't automatically put you into certain categories or force you to believe in a certain ideology or a certain religion. Everyone should be in a unique individual able to do anything they want and to try to claim people as being part of a community. I just think is unbelievably rude and just basically inaccurate. You can't claim people based on their freaking characteristics. Like you own them or something. No question, but I tell you, if you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, then you ain't black. It don't have nothing to do with Trump. It has to do with the fact I want something for my community. I would love to see- Take you a look at my record, man. I extended the voting racks 25 years. Um, I want to talk to you about mostly black stuff. I get overwhelming support from the black leadership, young and old. Every poll shows me way ahead. 
and black people saved your political life in the primaries this year. They have things they want from you, and one of them is a black woman running mate. What, what do you say to them? Okay, so one thing that was lacking in the previous video was uh, support for woke ideas. So, okay, I'll play devil's advocate here. Intersectionality and viewing the world through various lenses, which I've already gone over, might be a good way of highlighting differences and helping people to understand um, various inequalities in the world. And I can certainly see that a lot of this analysis can be useful. I just don't think it should be the only lens that people see through. And this is kind of a problem. When you teach um, a lot of different ideas to people, then people have a lot of mental ideas to think with, right? One of the good things about reading a lot of books is you get loads of different ideas. And this creates a happy, harmonious society that can talk to um, itself. Um, if you are going to go down the other route of basically cloistering uh, everyone and only putting forward one worldview and only teaching one worldview in schools, for example, you're basically going to end up with segments of the country that don't even understand each other. They don't even speak the same language. They don't um, understand like what people are saying. I'll give you an example. Many years ago, I was listening to Sarah Palin speak and she said a bunch of words, okay, but I didn't even know what the words meant, you know? This is um, something that happens in Japan, but I wasn't really schooled in that way of speaking or that way of thinking, so I didn't know what the heck she was going on about. You know, dogs with lipstick and all this stuff. I mean, <laughs> that's just one example, but I think the problem is when you don't teach critical thinking, which is the key here, people become very, very uh, cut off from each other, disunited, uh, it causes a lot of civil unrest, it can even cause wars I would say, because people don't understand each other, which is why instead of teaching ideology to children, you should teach from philosophy, teach from different ways of thinking. I had a uh, philosophy teacher and he covered all um, the different ideas out there. Uh, so for example, he gave us the ideas which were pro-abortion and he gave us the ideas which were anti-abortion, uh, for example. And it gave me a much better understanding of both sides. This is the problem with wokeness. It promotes one idea. Anyone who doesn't conform, they call them class traitors or race traitors or whatever it is. It promotes hatred of the so-called um, privileged people, which is completely and utterly wrong. Yeah, there are maybe 1% or 5% of the population who are privileged, and everybody else probably isn't ultra-privileged. They might have varying levels of privilege, but to look at the elite and say that's representative of everyone is not right. Anyway, that's um, a better view of wokeness so i hope you enjoyed the video let me know what you think um and i will speak to you soon